One of the questions we get every year here at Ag PhD is, how much lime do I need for my soil and do I even need lime? Well, there are a couple of situations that we talk about where lime is essential. The first one is low soil pH, and it all depends on what crop you're raising in terms of what's actually low. And then the other side is low calcium levels. When you're below 60% base saturation calcium, that's usually a case where we're gonna recommend get some more calcium out there, and lime is one of the least expensive and best sources. Totally agree with Brian on these two situations, but the big thing is going to be finding where you have those spots out in your field. When you think about variable rate fertility or variable rate soil amendments that we're gonna put out there, lime is absolutely number one. If you've got areas of your field that need the lime, we want to get it out there. And you certainly have areas that don't need the lime. Well, we want to avoid it in those areas. We don't want to create any issues by putting lime where we don't need it. All lime is is calcium carbonate. So it doesn't sound like a bad thing because, hey, we're putting more calcium out in the field. But if you already have an overabundance of calcium, uh, certainly you wouldn't need it in those areas of your farm. Here's what happens in that low pH soil when you add lime. Low pH soil is only that way because it has excess hydrogen. Well, when that combines with calcium carbonate, the end result is three things. You end up with more calcium, you have water, and you have carbon dioxide. So all three good things and nothing to get concerned about environmentally. Well, anyway, when you have low pH soil, you're gonna get a lime recommendation. The first thing that we're looking for when we talk about lime and the quality of lime is the particle size. If you've got smaller particles, it will change your soil pH faster and it will change it better or more, however you want to look at that. So for example, if let's say I'm at a 5.6 pH and I have really good lime, it might boost it all the way up to 6.3 or 6.5 right where I'm going. If I have a poor quality lime, great big particle size, might only bump that, that pH up to 5.7 or 5.8. So we're looking for very small particles when we talk about lime, that's the number one factor. The next thing you wanna look at is really the nutrient makeup of that lime. So we'd like to see a complete analysis of the lime to see what other nutrients are in there. Oftentimes, if we're talking about water treatment plant lime or uh, lime coming from a sugar beet plant or something like that, there may be other nutrients in there that you should be aware of. Now, the primary nutrient that I'm concerned about is magnesium. If you've got a soil that's high in magnesium and low in calcium, as Brian had identified before, that low calcium field, well, we want to have a lime source that's high in calcium but really low in magnesium. We'd call that a calcitic lime. Now, if you've got a lime that has a lot of magnesium and quite a bit of calcium too, that's a dolomitic lime. Now, there are some situations where we need both calcium and magnesium. A dolomitic lime would be just fine in those situations, but in others, we want the high calcium calcitic lime. Now, it's possible, even if you have high pH, that we may recommend lime. The reason would be if you need to get a certain amount of calcium in that soil, we're typically looking for at least 60% base saturation calcium, I'd prefer 65, but at least 60%, then we may say, you know what, let's go ahead and get some lime out there. Your pH isn't gonna get a lot worse. It's already eight, eight and a half, something like that. One of the most important things in soil is having lots of calcium. Calcium's a big molecule compared to magnesium, which is very small. If you have more of the big molecules out there, more of that big calcium, then you're gonna have better soil porosity, you're gonna have better drainage, you're gonna be able to flush some of that excess magnesium and salts out of that soil, and you'll find over time your soil is healthier. Now, if you have really low pH and you way overdo it on calcium, you can raise that pH all the way up into the low sevens. We've done that on our own farm, and here's the whole thing, and this is the reason why we are such big proponents of variable rate lime. So the person who was spreading our lime didn't have variable rate stuff. All they could do was six tons per acre. Okay, we knew it was really good lime. We knew it was gonna raise the pH quite a bit. And so we basically said, hey, stay out of these certain areas. We don't want the pH any higher. But even so, we still got a little too much lime in a bunch of areas on our farm. So we took our pH all the way past the ideal range for corn, soybeans, and wheat at 6.3 to 6.8, all the way into the low sevens. Now we're working on getting that back down again. One question we get about lime is how quickly is it going to act in your soil? Now, a little bit is going to depend on your tillage system here and your rainfall. 
So when you have high rainfall to move it down through that soil, you're gonna get a little quicker activity out of the lime. When you're in no-till and you say, well, I don't have any tillage and you happen to be in a dry area, well, that's gonna be the extreme on the, the far end of, well, it's gonna take a long time for that lime to work. So if you're in that no-till, low rainfall environment, you wanna get the lime out there quicker. You see your pH starting to move down, well, you need to get lime out soon because it's gonna take a while for it to act. Now, if you're in an area that gets plentiful rainfall and you're going to till the lime in, it's gonna start working pretty quickly and you're gonna get about a three-year life expectancy out of that lime application in most situations. The last thing I've got is you wanna make sure that the lime you get doesn't have a tremendously high level of heavy metals. If you have very many heavy metals, that could be detrimental to your soil over time. So just make sure you're getting that lime tested for that as well. And again, like we said earlier, the number one factor we're looking for is the fineness of the lime. The finer the lime, the faster it's going to change that pH, and the more it's going to change that pH. Getting your soil pH moderated with a lime application may be a helpful thing in terms of controlling weeds as well. We'll talk about this tough weed later in the show.